Today on our utility trailer, we'll be installing the Dexter Axle Trailer Hub and Drub Assembly, part number 84556UC3. We'll begin here by removing the wheel, as well as the old drum and brake assembly. Now to remove the old drum, we'll need to first remove the dust cover. Large flathead screwdriver works good to work in behind the edge, just kind of pry it out. Now we will be replacing the whole drum assembly, the bearings, as well as the lug nuts and the dust cover. We will need to save the castle nut and there is a flat washer behind it. Now in order to remove the castle nut, we'll need to take this cutter pin out right here. So we'll go ahead and bend it back. We'll then go ahead and unthread the castle nut. Go ahead and slide the drum a little bit. We will not be reusing any of the bearings from the old hub or drum assembly. Go ahead and set this one aside. Go ahead and pull the old drum assembly off. Go ahead and wipe off the grease from the spindle. Next we're going to need to remove the old brake assembly from the flange. To do that we'll need to remove these four bolts here. There is a nut on the back side that we'll be holding with a wrench as we remove the bolt. This is the brake assembly that we'll be using for the replacement. It's part number TRBK10E01. It is for a left hand side. You can tell that by this brake shoe is smaller, which means it's towards the front. And it also, the magnet will be on the bottom and will rotate towards the front. And there's a sticker labeled left side as well. The back side of it has four studs here that will go through the flange. And on the back side, we'll be putting a lock washer and a hex nut. The lock washer we'll be using is part number 5-8. And the nuts that we'll be using are part number 6-17. Now we'll go ahead and install our new brake assembly to the flange here. Go ahead and slide a lock washer on, followed by a hex nut. We'll go ahead and tighten down all the nuts. Next we're going to need to go ahead and pack our bearings and prep the drum to be put on the spindle. We'll begin by go ahead and putting a little bit of grease in here on the race. Next we'll go ahead and take our inner bearing, which is the larger of the two bearings, and we'll go ahead and pack grease into them. To do this, we'll put some grease in the palm of our hand, and then we'll work the bearing into the grease so that the grease pushes through. So you can kind of see how it's starting to come through there. You want to work all the way around on the bearing, making sure that you get grease all the way in. Now that we have our inner bearing packed, go ahead and set it into position. When you put it in, you'll see how it's kind of tapered or narrower on one side. The narrower side will go in first so that it matches up with the race that's already installed in the brake drum. Next we'll go ahead and take our seal here and it'll need to be put into the back side once you have the bearing put in place. Now in order to seat the seal, I'm going to go ahead and use a small block of wood and a hammer to tap it into position. You want the seal to go flush here. Next we'll go ahead and put a little grease back on the spindle. Now we'll go ahead and take our new drum and hub assembly and slide it into position. Next we'll go ahead and take some extra grease here, kind of pack it into the hub itself. Now we'll go ahead and take the outer bearing, we'll need to pack that one as well. Then we'll take our outer bearing, again the tapered side or the narrower side will go in first. Now we'll be reusing the flat washer as I said before, so we'll go ahead and slide the flat washer in, followed by the castle nut. Go ahead and take a pair of channel locks here, tighten down the castle nut as we're spinning it. Now we're snug there, don't have any play really in it, still spins freely. Right there is the hole for the cotter pin, 
Now it is a good idea to use a new cotter key whenever installing new hub assemblies or when you've removed it. The cotter pin that we'll be using is 165649. Go ahead and slide our new cotter pin in place. Once you put your cotter pin in place, go ahead and bend up the end so that the castle nut can't come loose. And then here's the dust cap that we'll need to put on. Go ahead and set our dust cap into position. Once we get our dust cap lined up, we use a small block of wood and go ahead and tap it into position. Now we'll go ahead and repeat the same process over on the other side, but this time we'll be using the brake assembly part number TRBK10E02, which is for the right hand side of the trailer. Now that we have everything assembled, we're going to need to adjust the brakes. We'll need to remove this little plastic or rubber plug here. To do that, we'll take a screwdriver and slide in underneath it, pry the little rubber plug out. You'll then see a little star gear in there. Go ahead and take our brake tool here. A large flathead screwdriver could work as well. The brake tool is designed for it though. As we're turning the brake, we'll go ahead and adjust it so that we stop the brake by adjusting it all the way out. As you can see, the drum doesn't turn anymore because we've gotten it all the way tightened down here in the back. Now once you have it set at this point, you want to release it or back it off 10 clicks, the little star gear that you tightened up. Once you have the star gear backed off, you want to go ahead and check it by spinning the drum and you want to feel a little bit of slight resistance or the brake shoes just barely touching on the drum. We have just a little bit of resistance, so we're pretty good. We'll go ahead and put the plug back in the back side of the backing plate. Now let's go ahead and point out our wiring. You'll notice that there's two wires that come out of the back side of the brake assembly. We'll need to connect our wires that come from the front of the trailer. Now in this trailer, the black wire is the positive wire or the brake signal wire and the white wire is the ground. You'll notice that there's another wire as this wire here runs over to the passenger side. So we'll need to tie this in when we make our connections. Now on these two green wires, it doesn't matter which wire goes to the positive or the negative as it is going to a magnet, so it doesn't matter. So we'll go ahead and strip some wire back and make our connections using some heat shrink style butt connectors. Part number DW05745-5. Now that we have our green wires tied in, with one side of the wiring, we'll go ahead and match up the white wire with the white wire, crimp down the butt connector, and the black wire with the black wire. Now there's a couple different ways that we can seal up these butt connectors. You can use a lighter, as we'll do on the first butt connector. Now if using a lighter, you want to make sure that you keep the heat source moving, as you can easily burn the wires. Or you can use a heat gun, like we'll use here on the second butt connector. We're going to go ahead and put some electrical tape over our connections, just for a little extra protection. With that done, we're going to take a couple zip ties and help secure up any excess wiring. Once we have that done, we'll go ahead and snip off any excess zip tie to clean up our install look. Now we'll go ahead and move over to the other side where we'll repeat the same process. Now we're going to go ahead and use our tester here to check the electric brakes. If you don't have a tester, you can use your tow vehicle with your brake controller. We'll go ahead and spin the drum and have someone turn on the electric brakes. As you can see here, it stops them just fine. We'll go ahead and check the other side. As you can see here, both sides are working just fine. Now all that's left to do is reinstall our wheels and we're ready to hit the road. And that'll do it for the installation of the Dexter Axle Trailer Hub and Drub Assembly, part number 84556UC3.